How much worse is climate change making Hurricane Dorian? Democrats put trillions on the table to solve the climate crisis. Politicians debate climate, but the public is clear. I'm Jamal Simmons, and this is Why You Should Care. As deadly Hurricane Dorian leaves the Bahamas in devastation, it is steadily making its way to the east coast of the United States. Once a Category 5 storm, it has been downgraded to Category 2, but it's now moving faster. Maximum winds have lessened slightly from 110 miles per hour to 105, but the hurricane itself has sped up from 6 miles per hour to 8. That's according to the National Hurricane Center. As of right now, Dorian is about 100 miles off Florida's east coast, but it could hit land later in the week. Evacuations in states of emergency have gone into effect as forecasters are calling for possible record storm surges in the Carolinas. Now here's why you should care. Hurricanes are normal during this time of year, but some argue that they've been increasingly more intense and devastating. Dorian has already set historic records, as the Washington Post has reported. It had the strongest landfall winds of 185 miles per hour. It tied for second place maximum winds in the Atlantic Ocean. And it was the strongest storm on record for the Bahamas. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, Hurricane Dorian is the fifth Category 5 storm in the Atlantic in the past four years. So is climate change a factor? Well, if you ask Texas Tech University climate scientist Catherine Cahoe, the question we should be asking is, how much worse did climate change make it? Climate change is a big voting issue for 2020 Democrats, but these increasingly strong storms like Dorian bring it closer to home. The U.S. may escape the worst, but the Bahamas didn't. While climate change is one of the most important issues for Democratic voters, The Hill has reported that only about 10 minutes of debate time has been devoted to the issue so far. In step CNN and later MSNBC with town hall style forums, there are so many candidates, the CNN event will go on for seven hours. That's happening today. Here's why you should care. One of these Democratic candidates might be president, so it's worth understanding how they want to address the threat. Senator Elizabeth Warren and former HUD Secretary Julian Castro have unveiled plans that adopt many of the goals of former presidential candidate Jay Inslee. The Washington state governor basically ran a climate crisis campaign before he dropped out. Warren's $3 trillion plan calls for the U.S. to achieve 100% clean energy within the next 10 years by decarbonizing electricity, vehicles, and buildings. Castro's plan aims to direct $10 trillion in federal, state, local, and private investments over the next 10 years. Senator Kamala Harris, she aims for a carbon neutral economy by 2045, and that also costs $10 trillion. Senator Bernie Sanders released an expansive plan based on the Green New Deal. That'll cost about $16 trillion. His plan would eliminate fossil fuels and transportation and electricity production by the year 2030. Bernie's plan is almost 10 times the cost of fellow Democratic candidate Joe Biden's more moderate climate proposal. Other candidates like Cory Booker and Pete Buttigieg, they'll lay out their plans too. Now scientists agree, the climate crisis is only getting more serious. Will the politicians? As the 2020 Democratic candidates gathered to participate in a single-issue town hall forum centered on climate change, let's take a step back. The issue of global warming was introduced to the public way back in the 1960s, and guess what? For a while, both Democrats and Republicans agreed on its importance. It wasn't until 1997 that the issue became highly partisan after the Clinton administration joined the Kyoto Protocol, an international agreement that attempted to limit carbon pollution in developed countries. In fact, the idea of putting a cap on emissions and trading credits between polluters was put into law in 1990 by the George H.W. Bush White House. Okay, so fast forward to today, and climate change has become one of the most politically divisive issues facing our nation. Now, why should you care? Well, we don't really have to tell you. You've been telling us. A recent opinion article in The Hill detailed the study on public responses to climate change and global warming that's been going on for the last decade at the climate change communications programs from Yale University and George Mason. Their most recent survey found that majority of Americans are convinced global warming is happening. They're concerned about it, agree that it's mostly caused by humans, and even support a wide range of climate policy proposals. Many skeptics are concerned that climate policies would require too much financial sacrifice from companies and everyday Americans. But a recent Hill Harris X Daily poll found that 91% of Americans are willing to make at least a few economic sacrifices to help the environment. 
That included 87% of Republican voters. You care. Do the people who govern you? Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos and head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.